Hi YouTube, this is Patrick and this is my review of True Blood Season 5 Episode 7. The thing I'll first say about it is that I thought this was probably the most uneven episode so far this season. A lot of people on the comments have thought some of the previous episodes were uneven, where I kind of thought they were better than that. But this week there were things that I plenty much enjoyed and things that I did not. Basically, I'll just, you know, run it down pretty much, starting off with Andy. Andy had a scene with Bud this week, and seriously, they could have just, like, flashed on the screen, just go to the bathroom, bathroom break, this is absolutely useless, do not bother. Then there's Terry and Patrick, who the show had the, you know, the balls to not even show us them until ten minutes before the damn episode was over. It's like, if I don't care about them in the first half of the episode, I say, sure as shit, I'm not going to care about them and their retarded Balrog that's trolling them, you know, laughing at them, with ten minutes to go. I want to see the main, the other, the real characters on this show. Not, you know, the... Not the, the characters that should just be guest stars. Or whatever. Although Arlene's scene was actually nice, because it was a quieter scene, the whole wedding video. I actually thought it was nice, I really did. Seeing all the other characters that used to be together... Uh, you know, it was a little sad. It was dramatically satisfying, and it came early on in the episode. Not late. But whatever. Then, Lafayette... Last season, uh, Lafayette went with Jesus to see... What was it? I guess it's his grandfather, I guess. And I didn't like that stuff last season. And I was worried I wouldn't like it this week, and I didn't like it this week. Uh, it was just kind of weird and out there at first... And then it was weird that they had Laf a shotgun pointed to Lafayette, and then when they cut back to him, he had, like, his mouth sewn shut. Kind of like, you know, like, oh, yeah, look, you know, his mouth is sewn shut now. I was kind of like, what? Like, wait a minute, did they skip that I missed something? Um, so that was kind of funny. And then whoever the woman was, you know, stabs the guy in the back. Apparently, she couldn't do that until Lafayette showed up. Uh, I get the guy's motivation why Lafayette had to go there, and that's fine, but I just, it was just very, very odd and just not. I mean, I've enjoyed Lafayette this season, but they've, I've enjoyed it up to a point. This episode I kind of didn't, and I understand they want to give him his own stuff to do, because he's not going to be a part of the main storyline until later on. But, I mean, it would have been nice to have him do maybe more stuff with Tara. I guess Tara's doing her own thing also, so that's, so maybe that's supposed to be left alone. By the way, not just because of the Comic-Con preview, I said this before the Comic-Con preview that I thought Lafayette was going to be brought into Terry's storyline with Terry and Arlene and the whole, you know, the whole thing and everything like that. And something I didn't realize until this week, which annoyed me, is that I completely forgot that they did the same thing last season. Around this time last season, they pulled Lafayette into Terry's storyline. So... All my predictions are feeling good about, oh, you know, I figured this out. I figured out what they're going to do this year. I didn't figure out shit. I just completely forgot they did the same thing last year. So, yeah, that was, uh, so that's a little disappointing. But, um, yeah, so it looks like next week we're going to get that story, hopefully culminating into, into whatever happens with them next week, and then I guess they'll be able to join the rest of our characters uh, with their problems. So yeah, so from there, I'll move on to Tara and Pam. Tara had another good uh, a good scene this week. Her mother's a bitch. That was awful. Um, the scene with Tara and Pam was nice. I like that Tara really has a chance to become happier uh, because she's a vampire. Just Pam basically telling her that, you know, in a hundred years, you're going to forget all this. It was just nice. And, the, you know, the two of them, they're having a relationship that's evolving as the season goes. So there seems to be a point to it every week. Like, um, we're getting character development every week with the two of them. So, that serves its purpose when we get scenes between them. Uh, unlike with all the Terry and the Andy shit this week and all that stuff. So, I like that stuff. Um, the, the Tara stuff. Then, basically, moving on to the rest of everyone. The rest of all the other storylines, we got basically Aliseed is going to bleed into Sam's storyline which is going to kind of bleed into what's going on with Hoyt, which of course is going to bleed into what's going on with Jessica, and then to Jason and probably to Sookie. So all that's going to come together. We got, you know, it was nice to see Alice Seed's moved on from Sookie with that new wolf girl. I like that uh, Marcus's mother was accusing Alice Seed of, you know, whatever, the, guy, the other wolf didn't take vampire blood. The show's done a better job this season of not waiting weeks for someone to come about the truth. By the end of the episode, she found the guy who was trying to give Emma 
the vampire blood, so I liked that that moved fast. Um, also, because that's Emma's grandmother, it's going to move towards Sam, who this week uh, had a very funny scene early on with Kenya, who I missed. That was, that was a lot of funny with him rolling around. And the cliffhanger was him finding one of the guys um, that was in an Obama mask before. Don't quite know what their next target is yet, but clearly Sam and Alice are probably going to be fighting these guys because not just after shifters. And um, basically, it also bleeds, like I said, with Hoyt kind of join them, which I really hope the sh I hope Hoyt doesn't just kind of completely do a 180 and just like saves Jessica at some point. Because it's just it's just so tired. Just you know, have a have a make the character a tra tra um, tragic tragic figure. Can't talk. Uh, and just have him go into a downward spiral. What's wrong with some tragedy on a drama show? Let's just see it. Would be nice. Uh, I think it'd be nice. But uh, we'll, we'll see what they do with that. Then basically, I'll move on to I'll get to Jessica and Jason in a second. I'll just move on to to Suki, who they're letting Suki have this like giving her a choice that she can get rid of her powers. It's fine. It's something for her to do for her character, but we all know eventually she's going to have to use it again, so it's kind of just like a filler a little bit, but whatever. She did have two great scenes this week. I thought one with Sam and one with Jason. I like them because they were quiet, just quiet moments where, you know, in an episode that's always full of, or a show that's always full of craziness, it's nice to have these quiet, you know, one-on-one -on -one scenes. The, the one with Sam is stuff they used to do a lot in season one, so it was nice to see. And, you know, it was more about, you know, Sookie and her her decision to deal, to do what she did by the end of the episode. So that was fine. And the scene with Jason, I really liked because it showed just, like, maturity on both of them that we didn't have early on in the show. And again, it was just a nice and quiet scene. Jason giving her, you know, comfort and then, you know, talking about how she gave him the same for so long. So it was a very nice scene. So I liked that stuff a lot. What I didn't like was Jason's scene with Jessica because, you know, I was saying earlier this year they were acting much more mature and it was nice to see. This was the opposite. He goes over there, he's drunk, you know, he's pissed off a vampire, so he goes and talks to a vampire. Then he kisses her and she's, he's pissed off that, you know, she tastes, he tastes like someone else's blood. You know, it's not like, that's all she can eat, man. It's not like... You know, she didn't have a tuna fish sandwich for lunch. If you're going to kiss her, sometimes you're going to, you know, taste what someone had earlier in the day or something like that. So, but whatever. It was just completely immature. You know, she bites him. He shoots her in the head. He gets kicked out. It's, I don't know. It's just, it was just, it was, it annoyed me. It bothered me. It, it felt like, um, they just downgraded from earlier in the season, which bothered me. The, um... I guess that's it for pretty much all those characters. Like I said, all those characters are just going to all eventually group in together. Um, but then as far as the authority stuff, which I thought was the best stuff in this episode by far, it was also hilarious. Just right away, Eric and Bill walking into the, the bedroom, and uh, Salome's there with Russell and then Nora. And Nora was trying to talk to Eric, and he was just like, fuck you. And uh, it was very, very funny. And Dennis O'Hare is just doing, you know, great stuff in the background, just with every gesture and everything that he was doing. So, uh, it was a lot of fun. And, um, the scene where they drank Lilith's blood, uh, the poor guy that was in Hell on Wheel Wheels, is, you know, Russell just, like, backhanded his head off, which, again, made me laugh out loud. And I kind of, it's interesting that Russell seems to be a hired gun for now. I guess he's going to remain a hired gun for as long as he pleases until he feels like going off the deep end again. But for now, he's going to work for them and just see where it goes. Uh, but, I, I mean, I love all those characters just standing in one room. It was just, you know, with Newland and the rest of the Authority members and Bill and Eric and Russell, it was, it was pretty crazy. And the best part of the episode was them in New Orleans. That was hilarious. They, um, you know, uh, Bill jumping on the hood of the car, and you got Russell in the background with the sunglasses just staring at the guy and his hat on. Bill's yelling at the guy. Eric runs to the side window. You know, tells him his heart sounds like shit. It was just very funny. Bill leaps onto Eric's back. And uh, very, very, very funny stuff. And then um, the end scene. At first I was a little annoyed and disappointed. Because I thought it was just way out there. Too weird with the whole Lilith thing. But then it's obviously revealed by Godric that it's just a hallucination. That none of them can see except for Eric. Uh, it was nice to see Godric, by the way. By, by, uh, again, by the way. Uh, I like how he just keeps on 
popping up like a guardian angel over and over again. And it appears that basically we know Godric wants Eric to save Nora. But with the bromance between Eric and Bill this season, I uh, assume Eric's going to have to save Bill also. And, um, you know, I guess that's how we're going we're gonna to do this. Next week, hopefully, they'll resolve the Terry storyline with help from Lafayette. And then all those characters will help with what's going on with the, the bigots and the Obama masks. And everything like that can be solved in Bonton before they have to deal with Russell and the Authority and all that stuff. Um, that I mean, to me, that just seems to be the direction we're going with for these remaining episodes. Uh, it, it, I don't know how well it's going to go. It could go well. It could, it could not. But um, for now, this episode, I thought it was uneven. But, uh, you know, they're allowed to have uneven episodes if they, you know, if they deliver next week or the next couple and have a good finish to the season, which I hope they will. But regardless, if you enjoyed the episode more than me, I'm very happy for you. And let me know uh, what you thought about it. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Sorry this one was a little bit shorter. It was actually the second time I had to record it. Uh, the first time it got, like, deleted and messed up and everything. So, sorry about that. Um, but, all right. I'll see you guys next week. Later.